slender drow blade impales the stone before you, keeping a silent vigil. This blade was a warrior's sacrifice to Elistray. Blood can only be honored with blood. The drow script inscribed on the blade flickers and glows. It rises from the stone hanging in the air in silent offering. Broken bones. Must have fallen. Forever, pal.
Even the mushrooms down here can be trusted. She's coming. Well, you've been naughty. And you know what happens when you're naughty. Gods damn it. Anyone but her. to let the Hellcat out of the bag. Call me Mizora. I'm Will's patron, the fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. We had a deal, Will. But Karlak's still breathing. I've taken more pleasant shits than you, Mizora. And at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Karlak, Zariel sends her regards. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupster's found his bark. Clause G, Section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. Don't you worry. That ship has long sailed the sticks. But a defiant pup must still pay his price. To wit. Will burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence and their torment. That 
gets better. What the hells have you done? A promise broken, a price paid. You know the terms. Get used to the new form, pet. There's no going back. Some magic even I can't undo. Now, let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade. Karlak, keep an eye on him, would you? I'll be keeping mine on you. Oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. I'll be honest, soldier. I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. <sighs> Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. <sighs> you can say that again. When he was chasing me through a Vernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was. damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right, and Mazora made me pay for it. I'd be hunting devils and demons, she said. Traitors and hypocrites, heartless evils of all sorts, but not... not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Warlock pets tend to be unforgiving from what you know of them. Will was lucky he didn't face a more severe punishment. years. You'd think it's a lesson I'd have well learned. It's Mazora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. It's... Not unrelated. I wish I could tell you more. I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. But I'll say this. The moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. It was my proudest deed. It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. I promised I'd be back. Don't worry. 
I have things under control. For now. I see you've been using the powers the tadpole gives you. Good. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Halsin might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Halsey knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites are merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. The absolute sames are not yet clear to me, but its progress towards domination is clear. These parasites are more than a lithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the true souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be mind flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. It's complicated, but I'm an adventurer, just like you. Just like you, I was infected with a Mind Flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. The power I used to protect you, I stole it from someone. They want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can, but sooner or later I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering at Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it.
careful. Even the mushrooms can't be trusted. Hmm? All's well that ends... No, not as bad as it could have. You are swallowed by a chorus of turbulent music. Through one creature sing many voices. The harmony of an entire collective. Sovereign, he has come. He is here. The choir fades. A single melody rises above the others. Brassy and commanding. I am sovereign. You see a vision. Your lifeless body wrapped in fungal tendrils. The sovereign is threatening you. State your purpose. Fungal roots weave through your mind. Seeking your true intent. Then the Sovereign drones a new melody. Cautious, but welcoming. I can mend neither skin nor spirit. But we still might commune. Descend to me. Let us speak in flesh. The persistent music coaxes you forward. The Sovereign expects you. Should get a mask. Ah, a visitor. You're a welcome sight. But let us observe the customs of the locals. The scholar's brow tenses. His voice spills into your skull, the spores connecting mind to mind. Blurg. Proud member of the Society of Brilliance at your service. not. Mm, your mind is far more complex than that of the fungi. Understandable. We are small in number, and rarely stay in one place for long. My colleagues and I are working to improve conditions in the Underdark. This need not be such a dire, hostile place. It's curious to find a surface dweller here. What has brought you down so deep? Truly remarkable. But why come to the Underdark, where they hold so much power? You were infected by an illithid tadpole. It's a miracle you're still intact. You must be worried sick, but have no fear. I have a friend who may be able to assist. Omelium! I hope this is important, Blurg. My Zerkwood samples need constant attention. It is. This adventurer has an illithid tadpole inside his head, but he hasn't turned. No ceramorphosis. That's impossible, but intriguing. Are you looking to have it extracted? Open your mind to me. Let us see what lurks within.
As the Melowan's mind pierces yours, the tadpole pulses with power. It feels ten times its size. Alive. Awake. Almost smug. This is most unusual. The incubation period should be complete, as should your transformation. But the lava is infused with strange magic. It appears to be in some form of stasis. No. It appears to be shielded from physical and magical influence. And even without the shield, the extraction would involve severe cranial trauma. It is not ideal. The process would surely kill you. But not to worry. Should you transform, I will happily perform a new examination. A nautiloid? Fascinating. I have never set foot on one myself. They were our warships during the greatest eras of the Illithid Empire. We ruled the entire astral plane from their decks. The design was lost when the Gith rebelled and ended our dominion. Of course. I am sorry I cannot assist you in its removal. But... I have... an idea. Oh, perhaps I should start taking notes. There may be a way to bypass that stasis. There are many alchemical substances that can influence the mind. A tincture distilled from a collection of rare mushrooms. They have subtle psionic influence. I would require a fresh tongue of madness and timusk spores. But be warned, in their natural state, both of these mushrooms can be quite dangerous. Timusks cause confusion in those that approach them. The tongue is self-explanatory. My formula will hamper the more harmful effects once the mushrooms are brewed into a potion. Your sanity, however much you possess, should remain intact. The Underdark, of course, although they are quite rare, and their discovery perilous. Hmm. I imagine Lenore would have them in her possession. She served Mistra as a cleric. She is quite fond of her garden. Lenore has always been a lonely sort. Nature was her only companion. I offered her the chance to join the society, but she refused. Her experiments on Sousa Bark took priority. May your travels be safe and swift. I have never seen anything like it, Blur. Is my species evolving? Perhaps, but at such an accelerated rate. You know, I can't tell if it's... Don't! Dwega! Oh, slashed me! Oh, poison! Dwarves, Dwergar have innate resistance to poison, and thus no need for intricate brews. 
Though deadly if left untreated, the poison can be cured by the antidote or natural remedies. I needed it. Why are you helping me? I thank you for your help, but I gotta get moving. Oh, it hurts. Carl's garters. Oh, I don't have time for this. My kin need me. Maybe not, but you are. I need you to rescue my kin. We can pay. We're Iron Hand Clan, best artificers in Baldur's Gate. We were on an expedition down here when the Dwergar snatched us up. I got away, but not the others. The Greys have them digging out some old ruin across the lake. Just mining for materials. Nothing unusual. But our work pays well. Help my clan, and we'll make it worth your while, I swear. Thank you. Only wish I could go with you. But here. <sighs> I nabbed these boots from the Greys when I ran. I'll feel better knowing you're using them to kick some Dwerger ass. I'll mark where I made my escape and uh, wait here, I suppose. Not much choice, eh? Sovereign's thick fingers stroke the corpse at its feet. A droning melody greets you as the creature turns its gaze to you. Flesh talker, I show you a memory. Watch and listen. A violent vision grips you. Dwega, dark dwarves chopping myconid remains. They broke our peace. They killed our young. The Sovereign's song slows to the pace of a dirge. It is still in mourning. We laid waste to many, but intruders remain. Lakewood. The Sovereign's song halts as it measures your worth. I sense your resolve. You will find Dwergar invaders near Lake's Edge. Cleanse the rot. Destroy them. I admit, I like this one's approach. A little genocidal, but effective. Deep purples swirl into familiar shapes. Gnomes in mining gear. Chased by Dwegar. The Dwegar seek a gnome. It is a guest. The Sovereign says nothing, but you hear appreciation in its song. An illusion comes over you. A Dwegar choking on a cloud of gleaming dust. Accept this gift. It will help you exterminate. The Sovereign gifts you one more vision. A wall of vines parting to reveal glowing light. Riches of magic and mind. Cleanse the rot, and they are yours. You do the Circle a service. We will await word. We breathe life into our enemy's flesh. 
The dead make a fine host for my growing children. If I die down here, destroy my corpse. Greets you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. Flesh walker, tongue talker, far you've come, reach into memory, tell me of home. It cringes in response to your sunny vision. It reveals its own home in reply, a humid cove filled with decaying myconid corpses. Dwegar destroyed my people. I am a sovereign with no circle. This circle does not welcome me, but I have heard the song. You mean to cleanse the Dwergar rot. I mean to join you. I am the danger, and I am the cure. They erased my people. I will erase this. Remain in the Underdark, and I will follow. We cleanse the rot together. Seems the shrooms are letting in more people every day. You see a fella on his own on your way in. Dwarf. Balin's his name. Right now. Waiting for that idiot Balin's return. Unless you've seen him, we don't have much to discuss. Right. Never mind. My useless husband. Sent him for an errand. It's no surprise he's made a mess of it. Knock yourself out. But don't come begging for coin if you find him. You try to ransom him to me. You'll find yourself skint and stuck with a fat old lout. Bald. Blue tunic. 
Domazistic. Like an Still invisible fresh. hand pulling me Some monster it. did this, marking its territory. stopped me yet.
But the scarlet. And Michael, it's curious to find a surface dweller here. What a truly rem you, you must I have a Omelium. I hope it is knows. Are you looking to have it extracted? Open your mind. As a mellow one, it feels this, but the lava is in few no, and even without it is not ideal. But not to worry. Should you transform a no they the design was lost when the gift rebelled, of course. But oh there may be a way to bypass that but I would but be Timusks. My formula will have your sanity. The underdark, of course. <sighs> I imagine Lenore would have... Sh I offered her the chance to join the society, but she refused. May your trap... Stwergar, though deadly if left untreated, the poison can be cured by the antidote or natural remedy. Ah, why are you helping me? No, I, but I thank you. <clears throat> Carl's garters. Oh, uh, maybe not. We can. We were. All, I got away, but not the others. The Greys have them digging out some. Just mine, but our work pays well. Help my clan, and we'll make. Thank you. But here, I'll mark where I made my. No, I can't tell if it's more. A sovereign's thick thing. Flesh. A violent. They broke a sovereign. Wheel. A sovereign. I sense. I admit. I like. Deep purple sweat. The Dwergar seek a gnome. It is a guest. The sovereign says an illusion comes over you. A dwerg. Except. The sovereign. Richard, you do the circle a service. We breathe life in the dead. If I die down here. Destroy my corpse. Cringes, overwhelmed. It the but I have heard the sky in death. Your foe becomes remain. Seems that you see a fella on his own on your way in, dwarf. Right now, waiting for that. Like I told you already, I'm waiting for that bald, blue. Right, never mind. My useless husband. Send him. Knock yourself. You try to ransom him to me. You'll find your.
Stop! Stop! Pippa Bang! You recognize the name. Pippa Bang, a mushroom that releases dangerous spores. Highly flammable. I know that! Scroll! Escape! My bag, please! I've dropped it! Somewhere! Thank you! Thank you! and blades always sharp. Just have to, and then here. Careful. God, I can finally breathe.
Stop! Stop! People pay! These mushrooms! Toxic! Scroll! Escape! My bag! Please! I've dropped it! Somewhere! Thank you! Thank you! going. Breathe deep and move. Don't touch me. No time to rest. Light on my feet. to Dali. Got to press on. In time saves. Well, well hello. As, uh, what were you saying? I was looking for Dereth. She's... She'll be worried sick. I must... Need to go. For you. Your trouble. Ta. Thank you. 
that? Got my useless old man back. I suppose that's your doing. His hands are empty as a whole. We'll have to send him back out soon enough. Please, Balin's got a job to do. We can leave when he's done it. Love? <laughs> Never heard of it. Balin's meek now, but he used to be a rotten old bastard. Treated me like an old shoe for 70 years. Losing his mind was the only good he ever did by me. Collecting noble stock. Valuable mushroom. We have a shop in Boulder's Gate. The locals go mad for it. Nearly nothing it can't cure. Blindness, poison, hair loss. Probably. But Balin in his right mind wasn't worth half a half of noble stock. I know him better than anyone. Got the scars to prove it. such an accelerated rate. We'll watch some next time. That old idiot. Saw you making off with our boat. You should have stayed away, sun scum. No 
turn for mercy. <laughs> Fuck 
yes. I've got it. for peace.
The usurper is dead. So much for circle glut. I doubt any tears will be shed. Or secreted. Whatever mushrooms do. These things have stayed interesting. Scorch marks. And it's not me this time. What's next? Go this way. Shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Moving in. Keep your distance, darling. Dread lightly. Making me sweat. Me? Still breathing, despite everything. to press ahead.
watch your back. Delightful. Oh, I could go for a good meal. I had another dream, which I suppose means you did as well. Whoever's reaching out to us truly does seem opposed to the absolute, but wants us to embrace the tadpole, venture right into the heart of the cult. Perhaps we truly have a secret protector, or we're walking into a trap. If you're sure. Fine. I'll be here whenever you rediscover your taste in company. condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. any effect. Oh, Mistra, have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. 
I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet. Such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself. The Lady of Mysteries. The Goddess Mistra. She revealed herself to me and she became my teacher. In time, she became my muse. And later, even my lover. Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. Swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. And yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured, then shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A Netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try, and the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound, then suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pulses. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. 
It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry. It'd level a city the size of Waterdeep. We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice, but if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. How can I help? With pleasure. Lead on. Direct me. Let's move.
give up now. Someone there. Let's be quick. Marching. Watch your back. I have a lot on my mind and, well, in it. to ignite these. Strange. That orb seems powerful. What can it do once it's extracted? If I was a quarter of the size.
get these flowers. They're bad. Still breathing, despite everything. Never a dull moment. All's well that ends well, not as bad as it could have.
strange place for a button, especially one that doesn't work. Is it the foul? The foul contemptuous heel. An unbeknownst command by fools that would intrude. Now steel shall ring. False tongue will speak no more. Cook with fire, baby. You're not gonna like this, mate. Find a route. Still breathing, despite everything. Best be on my way. Put him up. Ready for this. Never a dull moment. Another day, another fight.
blood. choice but to keep going. to take a load off, isn't it? Things have stayed interesting.
Attention! Still alive, so that's progress. I greet you, child of the sun. How has your search for the mushrooms fared? I was born with a propensity for arcane magic my people despise. It gave me the strength to resist the elder brain. Every waking hour I pushed back against its dire hold. My wizardry empowered me. The moment its control shattered, I fled, before the colony discovered I had defected. These are fine specimens. It will only take me a moment to brew them to proper potency. Omelion turns away to prepare the potion, lost in its own musings. You must drink the entire draught. I can make no promises as to its taste. It will lower the psionic defenses around the lava. If I cannot remove it, I may still be able to tell you more about its origin. Omeloum watches you with cautious intensity. It expects doubt. It expects fear. The potion is disgusting beyond description. The only mercy is that it goes down quickly. Not a drop left. Very good. As the potion influences your mind, you may find yourself acting irrationally. Try and stay focused. The world loses its edges, its finer boundaries. You are fluid but trapped like a creature suspended in amber. dance around Omeluo, but you stay steady and staring ahead. The tadpole spasms, seizes. It's fighting the potion even harder than you are. Fear pierces your mind like knives of ice. The parasite digs deeper, as if it means to hollow out your skull.
cold blades lose their edge. You are stalwart, turning that tide of fear against itself. The parasite swells with power, more power than you have ever felt before. It surges and twists, lashing out against that which would dare to intrude. The parasite in your mind quiets, pleased with itself. Omeluan, are you well? That lava is like nothing I have ever observed before. Its power is unsettling. Such an outcome was not in my calculations. There is more to this being than mere stasis. Such crude destruction may not waylay a lava like this, but there is another possibility. I possess a ring of mind shielding. It prevents elder brains from noticing my presence. It will not remove the lava, but it will limit its influence, both positive and negative. I would offer it as a gift, but in truth, the ring is priceless. Is there anything you could offer me in turn? A fascinating topic indeed. What can you tell me? What a brilliant experience, to feel one step closer to my ancestors is a fine gift indeed. Here, it is yours. May it serve you as well as it has served me. That could mean any number of things. Of course, the lava remains. Be ever vigilant of its growth. Have you spoken with Skris lately? Yes. Delicious. I wonder if this is worth the cost. Have to keep going. Now this. 
This is my happy place. gonna fall. Heading out. Another fight. Let's go. With haste. Gods, it's hot in here. Eat it.
for another round. Aye, aye. Find somewhere to camp soon. Perhaps, It greets you with a harrowing elegy, cheerless as the new moon. The music shifts, still melancholic, but now streaked with hope. Do you hear a new harmony, serenity? I name you Peace Bringer. Fragrant spores waft through the air. Your heart swells with bliss with your every breath. Freely you have given to us. Freely you may take. The Guardian Gate is open. Go and claim your reward. But before this, I have another boon to ask of you. You have cut out the Dwergar Blight, but not its source. In your mind's eye, Spore shows you a drow striding among Myconid dead. Near. This one is called. He hunted us. Hunt him in turn. Bring me his head, and I will know my circle is safe. The drow lurks in the ruins beyond the lake. Bring him death, and return. Peace bringer, be at home. You are one with Spore. Your throat tightens, then relaxes. The air is serene, your mind untroubled. The songs we sing now carry your spirit. I first named you Peace Bringer. I now name you Kin Spirit. Peace Bringer. <laughs> 